Well, I want to close my message today with an extended story, really with reading an extended story. It's told in the first person, but I need to let you know it's not my story. It's one I heard from sociology professor Tony Campolo in 1987, but I thought it had some good relevance and bearing for us today. So here goes. I spoke at a conference in Hawaii a while back, and traveling always messes me up. It was three in the morning in Honolulu, but my Philadelphia body said it was time to get up, so I left my hotel room and went on an adventure looking for a little breakfast. Up a side street, I found a little place that was still open. I went in, took a seat on one of the stools at the counter, and waited to be served. This was one of those sleazy places that deserves the name Greasy Spoon. I didn't even touch the menu. I was afraid that if I opened the thing, something gruesome would crawl out. But it was the only place I could find to eat. The fat guy behind the counter came over and asked me, what do you want? I said I wanted a cup of coffee and a donut. He poured a cup of coffee, wiped his grimy hand on his smudged apron, and then grabbed a donut off of the shelf behind him. Now, I'm a realist. I know that in the back room of a restaurant, donuts are probably dropped on the floor and kicked around. But when everything is right where I could see it, I really would have appreciated if he would have used a pair of tongs and placed the donut on some wax paper. Well, as I sat there munching on my donut and sipping my coffee at 3.30 in the morning, the door of the diner suddenly swung open, and to my discomfort, in marched eight or nine provocative and boisterous prostitutes. It was a small place, so they sat on either side of me. Their talk was loud and crude. I felt completely out of place and was just about to make my getaway when I heard the woman beside me say, Tomorrow's my birthday. Now I'm going to be 39. Her friend responded in a nasty tone. So what do you want from me? A birthday party? What do you want? You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday? Come on, said the woman sitting next to me. Why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you that's all. Why do you have to put me down? I was just telling you it's my birthday. I don't, I don't want anything from you. I mean, why should you give me a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party my whole life. Why should I have one now? When I heard that, I made a decision. I sat and waited until the woman had left. Then I called over the fat guy behind the counter and I asked him, Hey, do they come here every night? Yeah, he answered. The one next to me, does she come here every night? Yeah, he said, that's Agnes. She comes here every night. Why do you want to know? <laughs> because I heard her say that tomorrow's her birthday, I told him. What do you say that you and I do something about that? What do you think about us throwing a birthday party for her right here tomorrow night? A cute smile crossed his chubby cheeks and he answered with a measured delight. That's great. I like it. That's a great idea. And calling to his wife who did the cooking in the back room, he shouted, Hey, come out here. This guy's got a great idea. Tomorrow is Agnes's birthday. This guy wants us to go in with him and throw a birthday party for her, her right here tomorrow night. And his wife came out of the back room all bright and smiley. She said, that's wonderful. You know, Agnes is one of those people who is really nice and kind, and nobody ever does anything really nice and kind for her. Look, I told him, if it's okay with you, I'll get back here tomorrow morning about 2.30, and I'll decorate the place. I'll even bring a birthday cake. No way, said Harry. That was his name. The birthday cake's my thing. I'll make the cake. At 2.30 the next morning, I was back at the diner. I had picked up some crepe paper decorations at the store and had made a sign out of big pieces of cardboard that read, Happy Birthday, Agnes. I decorated the diner from one end to the other. I had that diner looking good. The woman who did the cooking must have gotten word out on the street because by 3.15, every prostitute in Honolulu was in the place. <laughs> it was wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes and me. At 3.30 on the dot, the door of the diner swung open and in came Agnes and her friend. I had everybody ready. After all, I was kind of the MC of the affair. And when they all came in, we screamed, 
Happy birthday. Never have I seen a person so flabbergasted, so stunned, so shaken. Her mouth fell open. Her legs seemed to buckle a bit. Her friend grabbed her arm to steady her. As she was led to sit on one of the stools along the counter, we all sang happy birthday to her. And as we came to the end of our singing with happy birthday, dear Agnes, happy birthday to you, her eyes moistened. Then with the birthday cake with the candles on it was carried out, she just lost it and openly cried. Harry gruffly mumbled, blow out the candles, Agnes. Come on, blow out the candles. If you don't blow out the candles, I'm going to have to blow out the candles. And after endless seconds, he did. Then he handed her a knife and told her, cut the cake, Agnes. Yo, Agnes, we all want some cake. And Agnes then looked down at the cake. Without taking her eyes off it, she slowly and softly said, Look, Harry, is it all right with you if, I, I mean, is it okay if I kind of, what I want to ask you is, is, is it okay if I keep the cake a little while? I mean, is it okay if we don't eat it all right away? Harry shrugged and answered, Sure. It's okay. If you want to keep the cake, keep the cake. Take it home if you want to. Can I? She asked. And then looking at me, she said, I live just down the street a couple doors. I, I want to take the cake home, okay? I'll be right back, honest. She got off the stool, picked up the cake, and carrying it like it was the Holy Grail, she walked towards the door. And as we all just stood there motionless, she left. When the door closed, there was stunned silence in the place. Not knowing what else to do, I broke the silence by saying, well, what do you say we pray? <laughs> Looking back on it now, it seems more than, more than strange for a sociologist to be leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes in a diner in Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning. But then it just felt like the right thing to do. I prayed for Agnes, I prayed for her salvation, I prayed that her life would be changed and that God would be good to her. And when I finished, Harry leaned over the counter and with a trace of hostility in his voice, he said, hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of a church do you belong to? And in one of those moments where just the right words came, I answered, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for, par for whores at 3.30 in the morning. And Harry waited a moment and then almost sneered as he answered, No, you don't. There's no church like that. If there was, I'd join it. I'd join a church like that. And wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all like to join a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning? Well, that's the kind of church that Jesus came to create.